Welcome, folks. We're going to talk to you today about Insight Analytical's moisture generator block. So we use this moisture block that you see right here to provide a validation source for your online or in-lab moisture analyzers. What it lets you do is generate a known concentration of water in a carrier gas of interest. We bring the carrier gas in over here and we can use any carrier gas, whether it be nitrogen from a cylinder or natural gas directly from your pipeline. We bring high pressure gas in, it splits up inside the block where part of the flow goes through a desiccant dryer. The other part goes internally where there's this moisture saturator and there's a fixed dilution ratio between the two sides. So right now we're running only through the drier side of things. We're bringing this gas down to a moisture analyzer. In this case, we're using the Tiger Optics cavity ring down spectrometer. And as you can see with us running through the dryer, it is currently reading about 81 parts per billion. And so this allows us to provide a reliable zero point for your moisture analyzer. So what I'm gonna do is allow it to run through the moisture saturator, change the pressure in the saturator, and determine what moisture content we measure at that analyzer, and compare it in this spreadsheet to the predicted concentrations that we get based on the assumption that the block will saturate it with water vapor at a known temperature. So if we look at the block right now, we have a temperature gauge, a mechanical temperature gauge, that's reading about 22 and a half degrees C. So that's my temperature right now. 22.5, or sorry, point, it's actually reading 22.25 right now. And I'm running zero gas, and we're reading 0.08 parts per million, 80 ppb. The spreadsheet is set up to only show one decimal place, and so it'll read, show it as being about 0.1 ppm. So currently at 200 pounds, 22 and a quarter degrees C, I'm gonna switch in the moisture generation side. You can see this is happening at about three minutes. So I'm gonna switch in this moisture generator side. Just turn the valve, allowing gas to flow now through the moisture generator and mix with the dry gas that's going in here. So the block generates a fixed dilution ratio. Every inside analytical moisture generator block is calibrated for a, mo a dilution ratio. And when you print the dilution ratio on the side of the block, We'll send that information with you along with a spreadsheet that can be used to calculate the water content. In this case, I'm just going to check my pressure here, at 200 psi gauge and 22 and a quarter degrees C, we expect to get about 159 parts per billion, or parts per million. So the analyzer will take a little bit of time to equilibrate and get through its T90. And so we're gonna allow that, that bit of time, and then we'll take a look at what it's reading on the front display. And from that, we'll then compare that to the predicted concentrations. Again, we have done this all with mechanical gauges and mechanical temperature gauges. It could be done with electronic transducers as well, which will likely give a little bit better accuracy. However, what we wanted was the ability to be able to take this out in the field without worrying about meeting any area classifications and generate a field validation standard for our online moisture analyzers. So we started running through the moisture generator side at about three minutes. You can currently see we're coming up to five minutes. And if we look at the analyzer, 
we can see we've come up to about 77 parts per million. That concentration should continue to rise as the system comes to equilibrium. And then when we get to a stable value, which is probably going to be around the three minute mark to generate a stable, three to four minutes to generate a stable concentration, we'll be able to see what number we've actually uh, stabilized at and compare that to our target or our predicted value of about 159 parts per million. So we expect this thing is going to stabilize around 160-ish parts per million. We can see again we started at three minutes. We're almost at six minutes now. So we've had about three minutes of stabilization occur. And currently the analyzer is reading about 161 parts per million. Just went up a little bit more, so we're going to allow it a little bit longer to stabilize. We'll give it to about the four minute mark to allow it to stabilize. So when the timer gets to about seven minutes, we'll call that a stable reading and we'll record the values then. So one of the things that we would like to get out of a moisture generator is the ability to generate a known concentration with fast enough response time that we're not waiting a long time for equilibrium. So we've done several things internally in how we've designed and coded materials inside the block to ensure that we can get fairly fast response and not have to wait too long for adsorption and desorption effects to occur and stabilize. So we've just hit the seven minute mark on the timer. And if we go down and check the analyzer, you can see that we've stabilized at 164 and a half ppm. So we're going to call that our stabilized value. The spreadsheet's set up to not show decimal places on these, so it's going to call it 165. All right, so now what I'm going to do, one of the other things we'd like to be able to test when we're testing a moisture analyzer is not only does it respond to a target concentration, but is it linear across a reasonable concentration range? So currently we have two points. We've got zero and about 160 ppm. If I change the pressure regulator here, so there's an inlet pressure regulator, I'm feeding this with about 700 pounds. So I'm gonna change my pressure at the regulator from 200 PSI to 400 PSI. So this is my next point in my calibration. Just gonna to check to see. The accuracy with which we set the pressure and the temperature is important for these measurements. So I'm just gonna check that's about 400 pounds. I changed that at around the eight minute mark. So again, we'll give it about three minutes, four minutes to equilibrate. And so the way this works is we have a saturator at known temperature that we're reading off the temperature gauge. And that generates a specific partial pressure of water. That partial pressure of water is mixed in with our inlet gas pressure. So in this case at 22 and a half degrees C, we have about 2.7 kPa of water vapor. We're running at 400 PSI, which is around 2400 or so, 2500 kPa in total. So if I have 2.6 kPa in 2500, it's around 0.1%, and then I get my dilution from there. So we started it running at around the eight, eight and a half minute mark. We're up to almost 10 minutes here, so we'll let it stabilize. So we'll let, take a look at it at 10 minutes. And it should be getting pretty close to stabilized by then, but we'll probably give it another minute after that. So at 10 minutes, if we take a look at the front display of the analyzer, you can see we've dropped from 165 ppm down to about 92 ppm. 
And so we'll let it run for a little bit longer, see if it stabilizes a little bit lower than that yet. Yeah, it's getting closer to being at almost 22 and a half. So let's just put this to 22.5 degrees C. And it doesn't make a big difference, but it brings that up to 83 ppm. And if we look at the analyzer right now, it's reading about 92. So we're seeing that we're reading slightly biased high. And again, that may be accuracy of the pressure transducer, accuracy of our temperature reading, um, and accuracy of the dilution ratio. But we'll call this, if you like, 92. So now I'm just going to increase my uh, pressure gauge again. Oops, other way, up to 600 psi. So again, this changes effectively the dilution ratio. My uh, gas is being mixed, or my vapor pressure from the moisture is being mixed with a higher pressure gas. And you'll see, although as as we increase the pressure, the the uh, changes become a little bit faster. So you'll see that I, even though I just recently changed the pressure, the analyzer reading has already dropped down to about 66 ppm. So it's going to allow it a little bit longer to stabilize. One of the unique things with this block, as compared to say a calibration cylinder, is we can do a relatively quick multi-point validation of how the analyzer is running. And so if we, again, if we look at the front display, you can see we stabilized at about 65.6 uh, ppm. So again, a little bit higher than set point, but that may be due to some temperature uh, and pressure uh, accuracy on the gauges. So we'll call it 65.5. And then, like I said, there may be some bias due to the gauge readings, but one of the important things for process control analyzers is, are they repeatable? If I run it under the same set of conditions, do I read the same number? So what I'm gonna do now is just lower that pressure again from 600 down to 400 and uh, see if we come back to about the same value. So we've set the gauge to about, actually it was a little bit high, about 400 PSI. Again, the temperature is reading about 22 and a half degrees. So our target is 83. The last time we did this, it ran at 92. And so again, we're just gonna give it a little bit of time to stabilize. Uh, just glancing down at the analyzer right now, it's up to 88, but we'll give it another couple minutes and it'll probably stabilize pretty close to the 92. And so in this spreadsheet, by the way, it tells you what it predicts the water content in the saturator is gonna be. And so if you take this number and divide it by that dilution ratio, that should get you to the value there. So when the analyzer is still coming up to equilibrium, but if we take a look now at the analyzer display, you'll see that we're up to about 90 parts per million. Um, we we'll just changed up a little bit above 90, and it's probably on its way to getting close to that 92 ppm value. So within one or 2%, we see that we've returned pretty much to the same value that we had the last time we were running under these conditions, even given the errors associated with reading those mechanical gauges. And so if we look at the values, you can see that we were biased slightly high on all of the readings, which may be an error associated with the gauges, but we've been able to check the linearity of the analyzer at a zero point and at three separate concentrations and look at the repeatability of the analyzer at one of those concentrations in less than 20 minutes. And in fact, now I'm gonna close the valve. 
which is on the exit of the moisture saturator side, which will again allow us to see, do we come back to zero in a reasonable amount of time? And so again, to summarize, what we have is an all mechanical moisture generator block. We can feed it with any calibration gas or background gas that we want to use. So if we're doing a moisture in CO2 application, we might use high pressure CO2 here. If we're doing moisture in natural gas, we may use the actual line natural gas as our high pressure feed gas. We control the pressure of that gas with a first stage regulator. That determines the pressure that we're saturated at and the gauge lets us know the temperature we're saturating at. I didn't mention it, but we also include a back pressure regulator on the outlet side. Some analyzers like to run at higher pressures, like for example, an Amatec 3050 will want to run typically at 35 pounds inlet, or we may want to test a dew point analyzer, in which case we could set this gauge to 200 or 300 pounds and see what dew point we get to. So we have a back pressure regulator to control the outlet pressure, an inlet pressure regulator to control the pressure we're running through the saturator. We have two streams, one that runs through our desiccant dryer, one that comes from the moisture saturated side. And by adjusting the pressure, we adjust the flow rates and the pressure we saturate at and allows us to determine a known concentration. Again, we've done four points of calibration an initial zero, and you can see that within a couple of minutes of closing this valve, our moisture analyzer is down to 2 ppm, and if we give this more time, it will come all the way back down to that probably 0 0.1, 0 0.2 ppm sort of range. Um, as you can see, it's only been a couple of minutes. We're down to sub half a ppm or 400 ppb and we will continue to drop from here. So I think I'll wrap this up here. Should have seen that we can generate multiple different calibration standards or validation standards over a short period of time that allows us to evaluate the performance of a moisture analyzer. Thanks for your time.